Did you know that there are three different ways in which the church celebrates different feast days? For example, we have lowest on the totem pole memorials. So these might be feast days that are sort of optional, such as St. Francis of Assisi's feast day or St. Henry's feast day. And it's kind of up to the presider of mass if he wants to celebrate them or not. Next on the totem pole, we have feasts, which are like the Feast of the Holy Cross or the Feast of the Apostles or Feast of the Evangelists. Next, we have the Big Kahunas. So these would be solemnities. So we have solemnities like Christmas, Easter, Pentecost. So we have memorials, feasts, and solemnities. What's interesting about today's feast of St. Mary Magdalene is that just four years ago, it got bumped up by Pope Francis from a memorial to a feast. And the Vatican released a document as to why they did this. And Pope Francis spoke about why he chose to do this. And he said one of the main reasons was to show the importance of Mary Magdalene as an example of faith for us. That she deserved to be a sort of on the same level as the apostles. So we're going to look at her and three things that we can take away from her example here today as an example of faith for us. The first that Pope Francis mentioned and this document mentioned is that Mary Magdalene reminds us about the essential and pivotal role that women play in the church. Sometimes this is overlooked or underappreciated. But Mary Magdalene reminds us that at the very central uh, mis mystery of our faith, the resurrection, God put this woman, Mary Magdalene, to be a witness. And it reminds us to appreciate um, women who play a pivotal role in our life of faith. The women who have gone before us in faith. The women who have proclaimed the good news to us. Secondly, who is this Mary Magdalene? So we hear about Mary Magdalene who goes to the tomb in John's Gospel and in the other Gospel writers, but we hear the most about it in the Gospel of John. We also hear about Mary Magdalene who cries and washes Jesus' feet with her tears. The church has also seen a connection between this Mary and the Mary who is the brother of La a sister of Lazarus and her sister Martha. Now, we also hear in the Gospels that she is a woman out of whom seven demons were expelled. Now, sometimes this is used to project what type of woman she might be or what kind of job she was involved in, but the Gospels don't tell us that. And really, the number seven is used to show fullness or completeness. So what this little thing, verse is showing to us is that Mary is a woman who was well-known sinner. She was known for that and she had done pretty much a lot. But God chose her. So we have a woman, we have someone who is a sinner, but yet God chose her to be, as St. Thomas beautifully put it, Thomas Aquinas put it, an apostle to the apostles that Mary is the first witness. This woman who is not connected to Christ by family line, but simply chosen by grace to be an apostle to the apostles. And so we have this beautiful connection between Mary in, in the garden on Easter Sunday morning and Eve in the garden. In the same document that the Vatican put out as to why they changed this to a feast, they used a great quote from St. Gregory the Great in which he said this, Indeed, because a woman offered death to a man in paradise, a woman announces life to men from the tomb. Let me repeat that. Indeed, because a woman offered death to a man in paradise, a woman announces life to the men from the tomb. So, we can take away from Mary Magdalene's example today, someone who was an unlikely person to be chosen to be one of the great witnesses to our faith. And yet God chose her as God chose each of us, everyone listening to this, to be an ambassador for Christ, to be an apostle in the world today. And just as Mary proclaimed to the world this Christ that she encountered in the resurrection, so too we encounter that same Christ today in the Eucharist and are challenged to pronounce to the world those words of hope, Christ is alive today.